Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to share with you how I was able to boost my clock speeds using the precision boost overdrive on the Ryzen 5950X. I'm using the ASUS Dark Hero motherboard, so if you have a different model, you may have different settings or interface, but the VBO settings are all the same across the motherboard's models. So with that being said, let's get started. Go to the BIOS settings and in the Extreme Tweaker menu, set the AI Overclock Tuner to TOCB standard. Without adjusting the BCLK frequency, the memory frequency, or the FCLK frequency as well, as they will be automatically adjusted when you select the TOCB standard. Then, call performance boost on auto and the CPU call ratio as well. Click on the CPU call ratio per CCX and disable the dynamic OC switcher. It's sort of an exclusive feature of the Dark Hero motherboard, but I found it to be holding back the overclocking performance. Go back and choose the TPU as keep current settings. Go to Precision Boost Overdrive and disable the BBO FMAX Enhancer. Exit that menu and go to External DG Plus Power Control and apply the following settings. Voltage Monitor, Die Sense. CPU Load Line Calibration, Auto. CPU Current Capability, 130. CPU VRM Switching Frequency, Manual. Fixed CPU VRM switching frequency 500 cpu power duty control extreme cpu power phase control power phase response manual adjustment ultra fast cpu power thermal control 120 vdd soak load line calibration level 5 vdd soak switching frequency manual fixed vdd soak switching frequency 600 VDD soak power phase, power phase response, manual adjustment, ultra fast, DRAM current capability 130, DRAM power phase control extreme, DRAM switching frequency manual, fixed DRAM switching frequency 400. Exit that and go down to the voltages settings and leave the CPU core and the CPU soak voltages on auto. DRAM voltage depends on your RAM model, so it's irrelevant in this case. Now that we are done with the Extreme T Weaker, we can start the most important process. Once you are ready, go to the Advanced tab and go down to IMD Overclocking and press on Accept on the warning message. Now scroll down and click on the Precision Boost Overdrive menu. By default, it's set as Auto but we are going to put it on advanced to further adjust it. Set the BBO limits as manual. Now to clarify a few things, the BBO depends on many factors, but the main ones are the BBT limit, the TDC limit, and the EDC limit. Throughout my experiment, I found that the BBT limit won't go high as long as you keep the TDC and EDC in check. The EDC is the main changer among them and based on your cooling setup, you may go higher because changing this setting can bring your CPU degrees higher as you go up, but giving more performance. I have the Cooler Master, Master Liquid ML 360 Illusion AIO that would keep me under the limit with the EDC on 150. You always have to check your CPU degrees and go lower on this value when you see the T die temperature around 90 degrees Celsius. Okay, now we can head back to the BBO settings and go on with our, our setup. Set the precision boost overdrive scaler to manual and the precision boost overdrive scaler to 10x. This would help to sustain higher frequency for longer time. Then head down to Max CPU Boost Clock Override and set it to 200 MHz. While it's hard to reach those 200 MHz, I found mine reaching 5100 MHz on a regular basis usage. Alright, then leave the platform thermal throttle limit to auto. Now we are almost over. All is remain is to adjust the curve optimizer in order to get free frequency gain. 
This is the most tricky part about the BBO because any wrong parameter will give you unstable overclocking. But thankfully, there are some tricks to get it done. I'll show you in a bit. Click the curve optimizer setting and by default you will find it set as auto. Actually the auto in this case means the lowest gain but a granted stability system and without much effort. I'll show you the performance I got on Cinebench 23 with all the previous settings we have done but having the curve optimizer set as auto. As you saw, the frequency that it reached on average was 4350 and the score I got is 27662 points. While it's not bad but we can still reach higher without sacrificing stability. So for that, let's head back to the curve optimizer and further adjust it. Select the pair core option to have all the available cores listed. Now, if we mess up any number, we will get an unstable system, like having the blue screen of death or frequently restarts and crashes. So for that, we are going to use the tricks I was talking about. On AMD Ryzen Master software, you can see both your CCDs in case you have this processor, with each having the fastest core marked with a star, and second fastest one marked with a dot. So in my case, my fastest one on CCD0 is core 4 and second fastest one is core 2 and on the CCD1 my fastest is core 12 and the second fastest one is core 9. Knowing that would allow you to reduce the magnitude on those specific cores since they are fast enough and so if you negatively offset their frequency curve, they would go on undefined frequencies and thus cause the instability issues. But with all that, it's still not enough since we got the speed situation of 4 cores out of 16, which is still a challenge and for that comes the second trick that would help you to set the magnitude for each core once and for all. Go to HW Info software and check the temperature per core and look at the maximum temperature that each core has reached after like half an hour of Windows operation and from there you can find out how fast or stressed a core is. So in my theory, the higher the temperature of a core, the less value to apply for curve optimizer and vice versa. So I made three fixed value for hottest core, average temperature core, and cool cores. And that worked better than adjusting the star and dot method. Because it seems, it seems that Windows doesn't necessarily push those cores to their limit, but may use other ones instead. With that said, let's go back to the curve optimizer and adjust each core curve. For every core, set the curve optimizer sign as negative and go as the following core 0 20 value core 1 13 core 2 20 core 3 13 core 4 30 core 5 20 core 6 30 core 7 20 core 8 30 core 9 30 Core 10, 30. Core 11, 30. Core 12, 30. Core 13, 30. Core 14, 30. Core 15, 20. With that, now we are done with the VBO settings and can test it out. But I would like to remind you that each processor unit, even if from the same model, has different core arrangement. So your hot or average or cool cores may be at different core numbers. So you don't have to follow all my settings on the curve optimizer, but instead you can look at your core's temperature and from there separate them in three categories and apply the same method.
as we saw that the frequency this time has reached 4500 and the score we got this time is 28342 point but since i was recording this video while running the benchmark the score was less than what i got without recording here is the score i got while not recording 29251 for multi core and 1651 for single core i think you can still reach higher than this but uh, i'm satisfied uh, with the results i got just for the sake of not uh, sacrificing stability i think it's not worth to go up for like 1000 point uh, more for multi-core at the end i hope you found this video to be useful and if so please comment with your results or feedback and please don't forget to like and subscribe as i'll be uploading more videos in the near future peace you all